do Spread out my faces from every nation I want to find a place that's for conversation Where do they discuss all the latest movies Or when something big happens in the news See, that's us, what are we talking about? So what are we talking about today? Hello everybody, let's turn this down and turn that off so I can actually see where I'm going. Hello and welcome to another episode of the CarCast. Uh, it's, mm, this is the podcast in a car, which right now, because it's winter, takes place at nighttime. Six months from now, give or take, will be taking place in light time, like day. But anyways, bunch of ridiculousness, ridiculous. Uh, so, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I feel a little bit jumbled right now. What am I doing here? Okay, so, first things first, how's it going? Sh- send me a tweet. Say, say how you're doing today. I'd like to know. At Winter Trooper. Or whatever. Uh, so, I saw some stuff over the weekend, and over the past week, there's been a shit ton of trailers, so I'm gonna, uh, there's gonna be a trailer time in this episode, which there wasn't last week, Uh, so if you missed that, you won't have to miss it again. (laughs) Anyways, first thing I want to talk about is I saw, for the first time, the Andy Samberg Lonely Island like, it's got Yorma Tacone, Akiva Schaefer, Sarah Silverman, uh, fuck, I can't remember his name, The Ladies Man, uh, it's got all kinds of actors, it's got quite a cast, and it's called Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping, it's essentially a parody of, of Justin Bieber's career, or his Never Say No, I don't know, I, I assume seeing how Justin Bieber's movie was called Never Say Never, and this movie is called Never Stop Never Stopping, it just, there's some similarities there. So that could be what the, like the, that's might be what they were intending, was it a parody of a Justin Bieber, of his life and career or whatever. And I gotta say, I, I, I didn't like the movie as much as I thought I would. Um... I'd heard, I've heard. There's been mixed reviews since its release. I believe it was released in like March or April or something, it, quite a bit earlier this year, maybe even the beginning of summer. Uh, but anyways, so I, I I had heard mixed things, but I am quite a big fan of The Lonely Island and their style of comedy. So I figured I would like it more than most of the people who didn't like it. Like I'd be in the in the liking it, and that's the thing. I don't, like, I didn't hate it by any means. Like, it was fine. I got a few laughs out of it. And it was quite a bit funnier at the beginning, and as it went along, it got less and less funny to me. But there was still some good laughs throughout the uh, second and third acts, for sure. Uh, But the thing that that I felt the most, it it was a super predictable story, honestly. Like, there wasn't a lot of stuff that happened in the movie that I didn't see coming. And in a comedy, that's that's kind of a big thing. There's comedies and horror movies are the two that that's the most important. Because a horror movie, there's two different kinds of horror movies. There's the kind of horror movie where you can feel the presence of something and you know this thing is coming, but you never see it and it gives you this uneasy, creepy feeling. Those are really good. Then there's the secondary type of horror movie, which are also loved, which is you don't, it's when you don't see things coming, and this can include jump scares or other different types of uh, stuff like that, and with comedies, the, the way that our brains find things funny is, so the reason why a joke is funny is because, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, we just fill in, oh, to get to the other side, or whatever, whatever we think it, the, the rest of that sentence is going to be, and then when it's not that, those are the things that we find funny, just involuntarily funny. Uh, and I honestly, like a lot of the jokes I could see coming, 
there was a couple of times when I thought, oh, they were going to do this, but then they did that. So, like, overall, I can't, I can't give the movie a, 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 I can't give it a, a great review or anything. And seeing as how this movie's been out forever, I, the rating system has to change. Uh, in terms of one, two, or three. Normally, when I rate movies, I'll give them a one if it's a movie you should avoid, two if it's a movie you should just catch on cable, and three if it's a movie you should go out and see in theaters. But seeing as how this movie isn't in theaters anymore, the one, two, and three rating system for this review means one, garbage film. Don't watch it. Two, it's really hit or miss whether you'll like it. Uh... And I think that's what I'll rate this as a two out of three. So it's still kind of the same rating system, but instead of three being rush out to theaters to see it, it's just rent it or buy it as soon as possible kind of a thing. And I can't get it up to there. Uh, if you are a fan of The Lonely Island and that kind of comedy and stuff, you'll you'll probably get a few laughs out of it for sure. And the reason why I don't, I'm not like upset about the quality of the film or anything is because I... I had a free rental and so I, it's not like I paid to see the movie or anything it was just a free thing so I'm fine with it uh, but yeah I could see uh, people really hating this movie I could see people really loving this movie or like me just kind of being like meh it was just a movie uh, so like I said overall I give it a 2 out of 3 uh, but I like that's the thing if you think think you'll like it check it out you might like it but if you don't think you'll like it you probably won't like it it's a very divisive type of film and I can see why the reviews were so split uh but yeah so overall it's it's got some good laughs there was some really good laugh out loud moments in it but it just didn't quite get there for me so I uh I can't give it full marks in fact I would probably give it a 1.5 out of 3 instead of a 2 out of 3 because a two out of three, uh, I at least enjoyed, and overall, I would say I didn't really like. I, it was fine, but I didn't enjoy it. Like I, I, I didn't like it, but I didn't dislike it at the same time, kind of thing. It was just meh, which that's about a fifty percent, which is one point five out of three. So that's my review. Take from that what you will, but uh, I'd like to know: Have you guys seen Pop Star? I mean, it's been out for quite a while now, so uh, let me know if you've seen it. What do you? What did you think of the movie? Uh, because this is just one guy's opinion, and I'd sure like to have a conversation and learn uh, what you guys think. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's that's the movie I saw over the weekend. But I also watched. I started watching. I didn't. I, I think I've seen two or three episodes, two and a half, three episodes of this new series on Netflix. It's called The White Rabbit Project, and what this series is, is so Carrie, Tori, and Grant, who were the build team, the trio from the Mythbusters, the non-Adam and Jamie Mythbusters, have a new show called The White Rabbit Project, and it's it's a little hard to explain, but what they do, it's, it's kind of similar to Mythbusters in quite a lot of ways. Uh, where they're testing different scientific principles and whatnot. But it's not necessarily scientific principles. It's more like uh, old patents or like w one of the episodes, the first episode is about superheroes. And basically what the idea is, is they pick six superpowers and they try to find technology that is available or at, at this current moment that can represent those superpowers or what have you. And uh, so they, one of the choices was super strength. One of them was flight. One of them was invisibility. One of them was mind control. And I can't remember what the other two were. But basically, so the, for the flight one, they, they have essentially what, like, maybe not Falcon's wingsuit, but Buzz Lightyear for sure. They have the Buzz Lightyear. It's not in a spacesuit, but it's just, like, literally like a jetpack with wings kind of thing that you can fly around in. But it costs so much money that it's not really feasible unless you're, like, Bruce Wayne or something, right? 
uh, for the mind control, it, it works quite well. And what they do was basically using electrical signals from one person's brain and sent to the other person's brain, it makes you involuntarily move around and whatnot. And it's really cool, but again, it's not really able to be used like a superhero can't just control anyone's mind with this technology. You have to have somebody sitting in a chair, strap some electrodes to them and that kind of thing. So, uh, like that's, they, they rank all of these things based on three things, which for the superheroes, the three things were, uh, cost, uh, closeness to the actual superpower and functionability in the real world kind of thing, I believe. Something like that. And so then they just, at the end, by the end of the episode, they have a they rank these six things from one to six, from most feasible to least feasible kind of a thing. And it's 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 a really interesting show. The only negative that I have about that is their first episode was so much better than their second episode that it kind of brought, like, it just kind of made it like, oh, well, it now has gone down a little bit in value. But I feel like, yeah, they had to put a really good one first to, to hook you in. But they're going to have more really good ones later on in the season. And like I said, I've only watched two and a half episodes. So this is a very beginner perspective on it. But I'll probably do a full-on review of the entire season one once I'm finished watching it. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, But that's all that I have for review-ish type stuff for this podcast. But guess what time it is? What time is it? It's trailer time. Boo, 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 boo. Trailer time. Trailers. Movie trailers and stuff. So, first, I gotta say, holy nefiness, did we ever get a lot of movie trailers over the past week? Uh, a lot and quite a few really good ones. Um. So, the first one that I want to talk about is... Let me just crank this up. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is The Wall, which I forget who the director is. But it was somebody that... The other films that they directed were quite good. I don't remember who the director is. Uh, But the actors in it are Aaron Taylor Johnson and John Cena surprisingly uh so when i first started watching the trailer i didn't know i I knew it said it says the wall aaron taylor johnson movie so i knew he was in it and you could tell who he was right away but the other actor in it i didn't know who it was i was like oh who's this guy Uh, okay let's see and then at the end when it says john cena i'm like what i did not expect that the performance that that actor gave could have come from john cena he's classically been the guy in like the marine and stuff like that which i i enjoyed it when that movie came out because john cena was like my hero i was i loved wwe back then like i still don't mind i like wwe is fine i enjoy it and i respect it as an entertainment industry but i just don't watch it as anymore i don't i like i don't stay away if from watching like if it shows up on tv i'm not like shut that shit off no i will watch wrestling it's just i don't regularly watch wrestling i don't i wouldn't have a problem with starting to uh watch like wrestlemania maybe every year or something like that we'll see but for now i don't watch wrestling that much so i don't know if john cena is still active regularly in wrestling i'm not sure if he is now actually pursuing acting but if uh, i would say that i think he's pursuing acting and i think it's working because i like i said i did not know that it was john cena he he felt like I mean maybe it helps I'm pretty sure he is a vet but I might be wrong and if so maybe that is what helps him in this role is the fact that he's playing a soldier which I think is something he knows so that could be why but overall the trailer is really visceral and interesting it and it it may like it seems like the whole movie kind of takes place in this one spot it's a little bit of uh uh, I don't really know how it's almost yeah I don't really know how to explain it but it looks really cool basically these two guys get trapped these two soldiers I believe they're in Iraq or Afghanistan somewhere in the Middle East they get 
trapped where one of them gets shot and he's laying out in the open. The other one is behind just a shitty little brick wall and they're trying to call him back up and all this stuff and like it just seems like a really intense movie and I'm not sure if it's based off of any true events or anything like that but the trailer got me really intrigued so I can't wait to see what else comes out of this uh, movie and I'm, I'm interested. It got me interested so the trailer did its job so it's a positive trailer for sure. Um, let's see what's next. Oh this movie guardians of the galaxy volume two so we got the teaser trailer a couple weeks ago now i think uh which was not very long and it just was a, a few scenes that played uh like a few flashes of scenes and then it had that little uh uh back and forth between star lord and drax where drax says like some people are dancers and some people are not and Star-Lord's like, yeah, I know, and I'm a dancer, and what's-her-face isn't, Gamora's not. And, he, and then Drax says, you just need to find someone who is pitiful, like you. Which, that was a good, good laugh moment. But this trailer, I mean, it, it's enough now where I'm like, I don't need to see anything else. I'm seeing this movie. But again, I already was going to see this movie, even if I didn't see any of the trailers. And James Gunn did say that they're they're going to be doing as much as they can to keep everything a secret in the trailers. So I feel like this is a movie that I'll be able to watch the uh, promotional material for. And I hope so, because this trailer, I, I loved this trailer. First of all, Baby Groot is ridiculously cute. Uh, Disney sure knows how to fucking make toys, because that is going to sell the hell out of some stores this Christmas. And next Christmas. And forever because it's a cute ass little baby Groot and Groot was already loved when he was just a giant grotesque ish looking tree now he's super cute he looks like a pop figure like one of them vinyl pop figures it, that's just what Groot looks like uh, so there's that uh, then there was a uh, good scene there between Rocket or not Rocket sorry uh, between again Drax and Star-Lord and it had uh, the new character I believe her name is Manta uh, something like that. Mantis, maybe. Uh, and in the comics, she's green. But in this, she's uh, just regularly colored. Uh, and I think that might be because they already have another green chick. That's Gamora. So it might be too much green. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, there's that little where she's she can sense what people are feeling when she touches them. And she's like, you ha are you are feeling love. And he's like, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like a, just a general love for everyone and she's like no sexual love for her and then Drox is like ah, she just told everyone your deepest darkest secret <laughs> like that scene killed me and it, I, every time I see it I make, it makes me laugh this trailer looks awesome we still haven't seen Kurt Russell or, and we don't know what he's going to be doing but that's fine because I'm excited this is one of my most anticipated movies. That, man, next year is so stacked for movies. Not only do we have episode eight, wow, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Thor 3, wa uh, Wonder Woman, we have Spider-Man Homecoming, X-Men Logan, like the new Logan movie, the newest Wolverine, like it's stacked. I'm excited for next year. And this trailer got me even more so. Uh... Then there was the the Mummy with Tom Cruise trailer, which I never fully watched any of the uh, Brendan Fraser Mummy movies from like the early 2000s and the 90s or wherever, whenever that came out. Um, like I like I said, I never really watched all of any of them, and I've also never fully watched any of the old classic Mummy movies. Like. I know of The Mummy, I've seen mummies in other movies, but I've never full, like, watched a mummy movie full on kind of a thing. Uh, and honestly, this is one that it looks like I'm gonna wanna see. I like Tom Cruise, he's a good action star. And Sofia Boutella is quite good in both Kingsman and Star Trek, so I'm excited to see what they do with this. Plus, Russell Crowe as Jekyll and Hyde, that's really awesome. And, like, Johnny Depp is the Invisible Man, like, they're, they're setting this up 
so that it looks like it's gonna be good. They're, they're giving themselves all the possible chances for it to be good, and so far from what I've seen from this trailer, it looks good. So it got me excited for the movie that I, I was unsure about. Like, it gives me hope for the monster mo- movie universe. Now, what I hope is that they aren't focusing so much on the universe. Because what you got to do, the, the difference between the MCU and the DCEU is that the MCU, yes, they had the post credit scenes with Sam Jackson in, in Iron Man and with Tony Stark in, uh, in The Incredible Hulk and that kind of thing. So they were setting the seeds for the possibility of an Avengers movie. But in Iron Man, the actual movie, it wasn't they weren't setting up the Avengers at all. It wasn't until the post credit scene. And same with The Incredible Hulk. Those are just an Iron Man and a Hulk movie that then at the end, after the movie's done, in the post credit scene, they say, this is a bigger universe that ties these together. And that's what they need to do with the Universal Monster Movie universe is they need to just make a good mummy movie and then make a good whatever the next movie is, like Wolfman or whatever, Dracula movie. They need to just make good movies that happen to be in the same universe. They don't need to make, sh- like, be like, oh, there's Johnny Depp is the Invisible Man, and here's Russell Crowe. Like, that's my one apprehension is, is, is that Russell Crowe is in there? Does that mean that they are just overloading it with universe stuff to make you feel like this is a shared universe before we even have one movie? And that's what I feel like a lot of people's problems with the DCEU is that in order to enjoy Batman v Superman, you got to see Man of Steel. Maybe not fully. You can kind of get it. They do do that opening scene. And then to see Suicide Squad, you kind of have to see Batman v Superman. Like uh, the DC universe is isn't doing the Marvel thing where what they're doing is they're just basically making sequels uh, like BVS was a sequel to Man of Steel Suicide Squad was a sequel to Batman v Superman so it, they're doing things a little bit differently and it's and it critically isn't necessarily going the way they would like uh, I believe Batman v Superman had a, about a 23% on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that I think that's insanely low but hey lo- that just means 70 seven percent of critics didn't like it and I can't argue with that I can see why it there was some problems with it but the biggest problem was that they weren't focusing on just making a Batman v Superman movie they had to make sure it was also dawn of justice we got to shove in dawn of the Justice League in there and that was one the biggest problem with Batman v Superman if they would have just made it be a Batman versus Superman movie but no they had to be like oh doomsday oh we got these other metahumans that are all part of this universe and we get it it's Man of Steel did it perfectly we knew Batman at least we knew Bruce Wayne exists in Man of Steel because they take out a Wayne Tech satellite that's all we needed. Now we know that's what takes place. All they would have needed was uh, to, like, yeah, they could have had passing references and not had an entire scene dedicated to Wonder Woman and Batman just clicking on all the links to see who all these other superheroes are. And then it also doesn't make sense why at the end of Suicide Squad, the same thing, like, he, Batman asks for that same information from What's-Her-Face, like, I don't get that whole thing, and it's a bit muddled, and again, I think it's because of the way that they're doing it. They're not focusing on singular movies enough, and I I hope that this changes, and from Wonder Woman, that's what I'm getting, is that it's just a Wonder Woman movie, and I hope that that same thing is what the Universal Movie Monsters are doing with this Mummy movie. So I have high hopes, but who knows? Uh, We'll have to wait and see. But it was a good trailer. It got me excited. And uh, that's a movie I'm going to definitely check out in theaters. Then we had Transformers The Last Night. Wow. Normally Transformers comes out with just some of the... Like, their movies necessarily aren't the best. Depending on who you are. Like, they made... The last one made over a billion dollars, so somebody enjoyed it. Uh, But their movies aren't necessarily well loved 
but usually their trailers are quite good and that's why I think a lot of people end up going to these movies when they end up being bad is because the trailers are so good but in this movie it's it's not a tra- it didn't feel like a Transformers trailer I, it felt a little weird like it felt like Michael Bay is just like guess what guys this one's dark and gritty and and, and remember when Logan trailer came out and was all dark this one too don't forget us we're dark we can be gritty I don't really know what to think. They said we're going to see more Dinobots, and apparently in a large portion of the movie, but didn't even see one in the trailer, and we saw them in the trailers for the last movie, and they were only in it for five minutes. I don't know. The, this franchise is the biggest question mark out of any franchise because, like I said, they've had great trailers for shitty movies. So maybe this shitty trailer means that it's going to be a great movie. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see but I definitely didn't love the trailer. I didn't even really like the trailer. Like, it was just fine. I guess that's a Transformers trailer. There was Nazis. There was Odin talking about King Arthur's court or whatever. Who knows? This It could be good. And again, it, it could be bad. The trailer was bad, I think. Who knows? But again, I'm not the hugest fan of the Transformers franchise. Anyways, like I, it's fine. I, I don't hate it or anything, but I definitely don't like most of them. The first Transformers movie, though, I do like quite a bit. The fourth one is one of the most funny, unintentional comedies I've ever seen. Anytime Mark Wahlberg talks about being an inventor, it's fucking just, it it makes me laugh out loud. Come on, guys. I'm an inventor. We can, I can, well, look at this stuff. I can use it. I can use, it's Optimus Prime. I can use his parts for my inventions. Come on, guys. Let's get real. Come on. I'm an inventor. Super smart. Like, wicked smart that's the only problem with Transformers 4 is that it's like three hours long if it was 90 minutes I'd probably quite enjoy that movie but it's not it's very long and the I know a scene they could probably take out you know the scene where uh, they have a conversation about whether or not it's legal for an adult to fuck a child yeah probably isn't needed in a movie just so you know anyways yeah I don't remember who it was that talked about it that it was perfect. It might have been uh, Mr. Sunday Movies uh, on the Weekly Planet podcast where they said basically either there's one of two things happen. Either A, Michael Bay loves Barely Legal Tale. And in fact, he loves it so much that this new movie has some Barely Legal Tale that's so barely legal that in some states it is in fact illegal. That could be a possibility. The other possibility is that there's some exec that works on the Transformers movies that's like, either I have a 20-year-old son dating a 16-year-old or a 16-year-old daughter dating a 20-year-old and I need to prove to everybody that it's not weird. And so they shoved that scene in there. I, It was weird. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Good job, Transformers. Uh, the next trailer that I want to briefly mention is 50 shades darker that trailer came out don't watch it don't give them any any that's the thing it's a garbage trailer like it's the first trailer for 50 shades i was like okay this is not what i expected it was actually a a, a good trailer like it didn't make me want to see the movie because i still know that it's 50 shades but it made me think okay this is not what i thought i was going to see when i saw this trailer but this trailer was more of the first plus more of the first movie. It's just a generic, like it's smut. It's fucking, it's no different than, like it's honestly porn. It's fucking softcore porn. Not that I have a problem with porn. I shouldn't have said smut. But it's weird, creepy ass fucking porn. Like you can watch whatever you want and jerk off to whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Don't phase me none. But I don't understand how there's a major release Hollywood motion picture that's essentially just softcore porn with one of the most lame stories to try and tie it all together as to why there's so much fucking in a movie. I don't know what to tell you. I saw the trailer and I was like, this is, this is, this is bad. Maybe it'll be the best movie of the year. Who the fuck knows? We'll have to wait and see, I guess. 
Uh, there's a few more trailers, and now we're getting to the really intense stuff. So the first one is Baywatch, which is a movie that, like, I was, I heard about, fuck, whatever, like months ago now, when they were filming it, because I follow The Rock on Instagram, and so pretty much every day after filming, him and uh, Zac Efron were doing, like, fucking chin-up comp- workout competitions on the beach and stuff like that. So there was a lot of hype behind it, and it, now we're not... Ag- finally, we get the first trailer, because the movie doesn't actually come out until, like, halfway through next year. They just had to get it in the can really early on, because The Rock is the busiest fucking actor in Hollywood. He, every day, it's, it's like there's some new project that he's attached to. Uh, but anyways, the, I never watched the Baywatch series. It, it was before my time. But when I heard... Dwayne Johnson and Zac Efron and Alexandra Daddario, who, she's a really good actress, by the way. If you haven't seen um, True Lies, that's not what it's called. True Detective, season one. Uh, But even in the Percy Jackson movies, like, those are not great movies, but she's not bad in them. Like, for the fact of what she had to work with... Her and Logan Lerman did a good enough job. And the other guy, he, he's just the funny black guy. I don't remember what his name is. He was in uh, Tropic Thunder. And if anything less than Tropic Thunder, you can't... It's not the same. So it's like, he was so funny in Tropic Thunder that he's not... at Like, it, it, that's the problem. The problem with those movies is that they are... The reason why I don't like them is because they're so kitty movies. But I like the idea of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief or whatever. Like, I like the idea behind those movies, so I've seen both of them. And Alexandra Daddario was quite good in them. And so, this idea of these three making a rated R comedy, 21 Jump Street style Baywatch movie... Fucking magic to my ears, man. It sounds like something that's right up my alley that I would love to see. It sounds hilarious. Sounds awesome, and I can't wait. And it's a lot more action-oriented than I thought. The opening of the trailer is like, this ain't your daddy's Baywatch. We got a budget here. And then they come in with some of the laughs. And this was only a green band trailer, so I'm going to give them a little bit of, um, like, I'm going to give him a little leeway on the fact that it was a green band trailer because most of the time if a green band trailer is about half as funny as the red band trailer for an R-rated movie just simply because in an R-rated movie lots of the best jokes are R-rated jokes, right? So, when the uh, when the red band trailer of this movie comes out, that'll be the real teller. But at, from what I've seen right now for the green band trailer, it looks good, and I'm excited to see more from this movie. And as it stands right now, if the movie came out tomorrow, I'm buying a ticket. It looks good. It looks funny, and it looks like uh, something I want to see. I like The Rock. He's a funny, chariz- charismatic dude. Same with Zac Efron. And that one scene where he like he's meeting Alexandra Daddario, and she's like, you just looked at my boobs. And he's like, yeah, I, I did. And she's like, you should probably just look at my face. And he's like, I'm trying, but... They're so close to your boobs. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Like, there were some really, really funny moments in the trailer. There was a, one or two jokes that didn't quite land. But the moment uh, where uh, The Rock and uh, what's his, and Zac Efron are, like, talking about when The Rock's like, my balls are saying we got to get in there or whatever. And uh, Zac Efron's like, uh, well, my balls, are, my balls are saying, no, it's dangerous or whatever. And he's like, why do your balls sound like four-year-old girls? Like, there was some good laughs. And the uh, part where... Uh, they're in the police station and he's just like, there's no such thing as lifeguard pursuit. And then he's just like, what do I got to do to get you people to understand? And he's just like, you people, you people. Whoa, man, you can't say that. <laughs> You're just tan. Like there was some really funny laughs in the movie and or in the trailer and it gets me excited. And especially since it was just a green band trailer and who knows what we're going to get to see from it going forward. And like I said, I, I'm excited to see what else comes out from this movie we'll just have to wait and see uh but overall i'm i'm excited uh a couple more here so the first first there was a teaser 18 second teaser for a trailer for spider-man homecoming which didn't really show much because it was an 18 second teaser for a trailer uh and then whatever it was the next day or two days later we got the full trailer for spider-man homecoming and this is a trailer that 
a lot of people love, but I don't know if I'm in the minority here, and this is something you guys would be able to help out with, uh, with your comments and your tweets, is I didn't love the movie. I, or I mean, sorry, I didn't love the trailer. That's the thing. Everything Spider-Man, like that felt the mo- the most like I was watching Spider-Man, right? This is the perfect Spider-Man and I can't wait to see that on screen. Michael Keaton, in just that like one scene that he's, the- he's super intimidating in just that one little scene. And uh, I think it was John Campia said it on Movie Talk. Lots of people have said, I'm going to kill everyone you know. But holy shit, do I believe that he's going to kill everyone I know. Holy fuck, man. Michael Keaton is the perfect guy to play this role, and I'm excited as hell. One thing that Logan brought up that I'm not sure is is maybe he's a bus driver because he, it looked like he was driving a school bus that then ran into Peter, that then, or, well, Spider-Man, that then hit another bus. Like, that's something I'm not sure about. But my problems with the trailer were that it's almost an Iron Man 2 issue where I want a Spider-Man movie. Yes, Spider. it's just like I was talking about earlier. Spider-Man can be a part of the MCU. They can make a couple references. I, I was glad to know that either Tony or uh, Happy were going to be in the movie to tie that in a little bit, especially since Tony and uh, Peter had that relationship in Civil War. But there was a lot of Tony Stark in this trailer. It makes me... Uh, like, okay... I'm fine with there being lots of Tony Stark if he's just a supporting character in the Spider-Man movie. But the thing that got me was we see Iron Man flying with Spider-Man at the end of the movie. Or, I mean, at the end of the trailer. So, this could mean two things. Number one, if this is, like, them going to do the final battle, kind of irks me a little bit, first of all, that they showed that... uh, Like, if that's going to be a secret the whole movie, and then at the end, oh, guess what? Iron Man's here. He actually is getting in the suit. That would have been a cool reveal in the movie. But also, like I said, I want it to be just a Spider-Man movie, and I don't want him to have to get help from Tony to beat his villains. Like, Spider-Man has always been able to just figure out things, right? He's a smart guy. He should be able to figure out, using his brains even though he's incredibly strong and incredibly powerful, he uses his brains to defeat his villains. And that's something that I hope that we do see in this movie. And hopefully, one thing that I'm a little worried about as well is the cool thing about Civil War Spider-Man is he's making his own webbing. He's making his own web shooters and all that kind of stuff. It seems like this is the Spider-Man from the comics, right? The guy who, he's a fucking like genius. He can make all the science stuff. But Tony is the guy who makes everybody look cool in the Avengers, right? And so he helped upgrade his suit. Okay, that's fine. That was for that one battle. But now he upgrades the suit again. And who knows how much... I just don't want all of Spider-Man's cool tech to come from Tony Stark. It's okay if Tony helps refine it. Like Peter comes up with a new type of webbing and Tony helps him figure out a way to like say he comes out with electrical webbing Tony helps him figure out a way to prevent himself from getting hurt by or whatever like that's the thing he can use Tony's help but I don't want Tony to be the one just handing him all of his stuff like that's one of the things that is that defines Peter in the comics is that he is ingenuitive and he creates a lot of the technology that he uses right so that, I, there's just a couple apprehensions, but overall the tone I'm getting and all that kind of stuff, I, I do like what I see from this trailer and it gets me quite excited, especially just the, to see Spider-Man and Peter Parker interacting with his friends. Like the, the very beginning of the trailer is just great where he's, he's like getting those uh, guys all dressed, the bank robbers dressed as that all are wearing Avengers masks. That was quite a funny little scene. And then the scene where they're sitting in uh, the lunchroom looking at uh, Liz or whatever, and he's just like, oh, Liz got a new sweater. We got to stop staring once it gets creepy or whatever. And then uh, Zoe Deschanel, not Zoe Deschanel, whatever her name is. Zoe Kravitz is just like, yeah, it's already creepy. You guys are losers. We thought maybe she was going to be Mary Jane. That doesn't look like Mary Jane. Who knows? We're that. There's some interesting questions that have been brought up, and I'm excited to see what they mean. And I do like the tone that they're going with with this high school feel. It does feel those scenes 
did feel like a coming of age story, like a uh, like just a kid in high school, and that's that's what I'm excited to see. Especially in the MCU, we've ne- we haven't had any teenage heroes in the MCU. Everyone's f- like 40 and up, so it'll be a new, interesting thing. Now, some people are saying it felt like Sony. It felt like Sony. I don't think it did. I think it felt like a Marvel movie, just a Spider Man. Like my only apprehensions are, I don't want, like I want the focus to be on Spider Man. And th- I had a few apprehensions going into Civil War because I was worried it was going to be just an Avengers movie, but it wasn't. It was a Captain America movie featuring the Avengers. So there is precedence for them to do it right. They may have f- messed up on Iron Man 2, but they haven't done that again. So I, I do give them the benefit of the doubt. I do trust Marvel and Kevin Feige. So I'm going to wait and see. I don't know if I want to watch more trailers because they did put that clip of Iron Man in there, making me think okay, they're going to put in other spoilers in the trailer. That makes me not want to watch any more trailers. I, I'm not a huge fan of watching all the trailers anyways because I, I'm tired of getting spoiled in movies. I think Batman v Superman would have been cooler if I didn't know Doomsday was going to be in it. That would have been like, oh, what? He fucking made Doomsday? Wow, I did not see that coming. But instead, it was like, okay, we know this fight's going to end and then they got to fight the big bad. So, I don't know. I did like the trailer. I just had a few apprehensions. That's all. But overall, I did thoroughly like it. Then we got another trailer, I believe the same day, that blew the Spider-Man trailer out of the water, in my opinion, and I could see why there'd be different opinions. So, War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, I never... I grew up watching the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes movie when I was a really little kid, right? And then I didn't watch any Planet of the Apes for a long time until when Rise of the Planet of the Apes came out, I didn't watch it at first because my older brother told me, oh, it's just jo- it's Deep Blue Sea, but with monkeys. And I was like, well, I've seen Deep Blue Sea. I don't need to see it now with monkeys, but that's not what it is. It just so happens that in both of those movies, they were working on the cure for Alzheimer's. That's the only, coinc- that's the only re- relating factor between those two films. And uh, I love Deep Blue Sea. Don't get me wrong. It is a classic guilty pleasure movie. It's it's got one of the greatest uh, surprise death scenes in any movie ever. But Rise of the Planet of the Apes is not a B movie, which Deep Blue Sea is definitely a B movie. Rise of the Planet of the Apes is one of the greatest modern films. It makes you, first of all, think that all, like, any ape you see in that movie, all CGI. What? The fuck? Who the fuck? I totally did not realize that. I thought that Maurice or whatever the the, uh, the orangutan is, I honestly thought that was just a real monkey for forever until finally I saw a behind-the-scenes thing that, no, that's not a real monkey. None of them are real. It's insane. It's got some of the greatest CGI and then it also tells an incredibly humane story and hu- and human story about an ape where I've never felt that attached to an ape before and, and, and underwent his struggle with him. It's an incredible story and it still lines up with the Chuck Heston movies. Now, after seeing Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I went back and watched all the Chuck Heston Planet of the Apes movies. Just, just great. I love those movies now. Especially the original. The original movie is just incredible. Beneath the Planet of the Apes, maybe not so much. But then some of the other ones are actually get quite good again. Uh, but overall, I, uh, I, I, I really love this Planet of the Apes franchise. Then when Dawn of the Planet of the Apes came out, first of all, the naming system in those two are a little weird. But the fact that it was as good as it was, who would have thought that you could have a movie about a group of apes struggling against the last flakes of humanity and I root I wanted the humans to die because I fucking felt so much for the apes except for Co- Kubo or whatever the fuck his name is Koba what a douche but anyways this newest trailer for War for the Planet of the Apes looks like the epic conclusion that we have been waiting for I thought in the last movie from the trailers that maybe we were going to get to see a good war between humans and apes but it was just the setup. It was showing the the final down, 
or maybe not the final, but the downfall of humans kind of thing, right? And now this is the movie that we have been waiting for. This is the war for the Planet of the Apes. Woody Harrelson looks incredible in this movie. And we've only seen like two little tiny scenes. There are three, I guess, little tiny scenes with him in it. And it lo- he looks awesome. He looks incredibly intimidating as I don't even know what the character's name is yet. Uh, but yeah, I, it, it got me extremely excited. The one negative I could find, and this is if I'm really looking, is that line, which it's hard to say whether I like it or don't like it yet. I'd have to sit with it a little more. But the line where uh, basically he said, if we fail in our mission, this planet will truly become a planet of apes. And that's a little on the nose. I don't I don't know if I'm okay with it yet. It is out of context. So we'll see when the movie comes out if that... if it, We'll see. I'll have to tell you then. But overall, this trailer, I f- just... Pretty, everything about it, I loved. I loved the whole trailer, the setup, the the very be- opening scene. It looks like they're on that 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 beach that, at the end of the original Planet of the Apes with Charlton Heston. I I can't talk about this enough. How much this movie just looks incredible, and I was excited for Dawn. Holy fuck, am I excited for War? You guys better watch out. War is coming between apes. And man, and I gotta just mention one other thing. In this trailer, there was a scene where it looked like we even saw some apes fighting side by side with humans. So there could be some big plot twists in this movie. I don't know where it's gonna go, but I do know we're gonna get to see war, and that gets me excited. One other final trailer: The Fate of the Furious. So we got the little tease uh, there on Thursday or Friday. Uh, The Rocks put it on his Instagram, and that was whatever, a little tiny tease. But then this trailer, I did not know what this movie was about. Family no more, hashtag. Uh, So it looks like it's a little bit kind of like the Transformers last night, because I forgot to mention, but in that Transformers trailer, there is, we see Optimus fighting Bumblebee. In this Fast and the Furious movie, it's Vin Diesel versus the team. I'm insanely intrigued by this. I don't know what this means for the franchise. I can't, like, I'm sure they'll all be family again by the end of the movie, but who knows? It also makes me wonder (coughs) even more so about The Rock and Vin Diesel's uh, beef there uh, based on uh, the filming of the movie. How much of that is just them? It's like, uh, like, that could be just a setup because they're not going to be friends anymore in the movie, right? Like, I don't know, but I'm really, really intrigued. And I love this franchise. It's, it's one of my favorite franchises. Like, there's there's Star Wars, there's Marvel, there's Fast and the Furious. I grew up with this franchise from the first movie to the seventh movie. It's been such an emotional journey with Paul Walker that not only am I intrigued to see the first ever Fast and the Furious movie to be released post Paul Walker. I mean, he wasn't in the third one, which is... I do quite like that movie. I know a lot of people don't, but I do quite a bit. Uh, and he's not going to be in this one. So I, I'm interested to see it for that. But th- this trailer, I it looks like there's stakes to this movie. And I know you guys might think that what I'm saying sounds dumb, but I have a lot of emotional investment in this franchise, honestly, from growing up with the franchise. And I know a lot of people didn't like the Point Break remake that was the first movie or the really crappy, weird sequel that was Too Fast, Too Furious, which I love, by the way. And then Tokyo Drift, which a lot of people think is the worst one. I definitely don't. I I don't know what's the worst one. I love. There's no other franchise that I love every movie as much as I do with Fast and the Furious. And I hope that I do it with Fast and the Furious 8. And I'm so excited. This trailer gets me so excited. I can't wait. The Rock is awesome. Vin Diesel, me and Logan always talk about how Vin Diesel is slowly just becoming a superhero. In Fast and the Furious 7, 6 was the first one where you're like, what? This guy's just like a superhero now. He literally jumps from one car across a gigantic divided highway, catches Letty, Midair lands on another car. Both of them are completely fine. I cannot wait to see Furious 8, Fast 8, whatever the fuck it's called. The Fate of the Furious. You guys got me. 
you got me to see another one. And I'm going to hopefully love it just like I have all the others. One thing that they have mentioned is that there might be a little bit of a scene with Paul Walker or something. Well, I mean, not with Paul Walker, but with Brian O'Connor. I don't know what to think yet. It'll, it, we'll have to see it in the movie. Maybe they'll just have a scene where Dom calls up Mia and he's like, and Paul answers and he's just like, hey, can I talk to Mia? Can I talk to my nephew? You know, how Vin Diesel talks. Who knows? Maybe he won't be in it at all. We'll have to see. But like I said, this trailer gets me friggin' excited. I, have, I literally audibly said, wow, wow, wow. Holy fucking shit. Those were my words while watching the trailer. Maybe I should start doing trailer reactions. The only problem is I don't know how to fucking make the thing pop up at the bottom while also doing the thing. I'm not super confused savvy, if you know what I'm saying. I know enough to get this podcast out to you guys, but uh, I'm no fucking... I'm no genius here. But anyways, yeah, this trailer gets me excited, and I'm fucking pumped for Fast and the Furious eight but that is all the trailers let me see how many there was one two three four five six seven eight nine friggin trailers that were all at least worth talking about to me this week uh so that was trailer time i'd like to know from all these nine trailers how many have you seen did you what did you think of the trailers let me know in the comments section i'd really be interested in hearing some other opinions uh so we're almost done so now it's time for reading watching or playing which over the like over the past week i've listened to i believe three separate books let me look it up quickly here by the way i use audible uh not a sponsor but hey if audible if you're listening to this become a sponsor why not right uh anyways just trying to bide some time while i pull this okay so the movies that i've seen in the past week are or movies books is the new ahsoka book which is quite good. If you are a fan of the character of Ahsoka, check this book out. Also, it tells an interesting, some interesting stuff about in between episodes three and four. So there's that. Uh, it also talks about how she got the name Fulcrum. So check that out. I Am Legend, the book, which was written in, I believe, 58 or something like that. It's, in, it's so different from the movie. Insanely different. And I already knew that because uh, Logan told me, but it's almost like not like there's basically no connections other than there's vampires in both there's a guy named robert neville in both that's about it like the movie is so different and i would i was uh reading today about the other two movies that have been made omega man and the last man on earth both based off of this book and i gotta say it doesn't seem like there's ever been a good adaptation of this book and i would love to see one because it was an incredibly interesting book. The way, apparently this book was also the inspiration behind The Night of the Living Dead by George Romero. So it's it's an incredibly influential book, but we've never seen a true direct adaptation of the source material. And it's something that I would really like to see. So any filmmakers out there wondering what your next project should be, make this a reality, please. And thank you. Uh, there was the Time Machine by H.G. Wells, which is also incredibly interesting. The story portions of the book is is okay, but the stuff that's interesting is to see what people thought the future was going to be like and that kind of stuff. And it, it's it is a really interesting read, and it's quite a short book. Uh, Audible it, it was only four hours and seven minutes, so one of the it's probably the shortest one, except for William Shakespeare's Star Wars. I want this to be a play that I can go see because it's incredibly awesome. They add a few little asides and monologues in there that weren't in the movie, but it it adds to it and it makes it better. And the cool thing is it's a full cast read, so you get the full meal deal. Uh, So that's what I read last week. This week, I'm listening to World War Z. Uh, I've I've read a portion of the book before, in actual physical form this was years ago a few years ago now before the movie ever came out or anything uh now i'm listening to it and i gotta say i know the movie is almost it's nothing like the book because it can't be to make a movie of world war z the book wouldn't work i think what they did with the movie is the thing that you got to do with this book so i can't wait to see the second world war z movie actually and i'm i'm enjoying this book quite a bit and i can't wait to continue on it 
Uh, but that's what I'm reading, watching, or playing. Uh, well, just reading. Uh, but then, yeah, so that's going to be it for this episode. Next week, because uh, I will have seen Rogue One by next Monday. I'm seeing it this Thursday. I will be doing not a review of Rogue One on the podcast because I'll just be doing a review and putting it up on the channel, but I will be ranking all of the, all eight Star Wars movies that are out and uh, just talking about the franchise as a whole and maybe we'll do some more trailers if there's some good trailers to come out. So look out for that next week. But that's it. That's the whole thing. Let's see how fucking long this thing's been going for. Holy shit. Almost an hour, guys. Longest car cast yet. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for listening, watching, reading, whatever the fuck, however you're ingesting this shit. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Anything that I talked about, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. So tweet at me, at Winter Trooper, at What We Talking. Hit up the comments, whatever you feel like. I'd love to know what you guys think about everything that I talked about. This is this show supposed to be a conversation show. So hit me up. Uh, but anyways, that's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed and want more, you can either uh, follow me on SoundCloud or on iTunes or YouTube. Any of those locations. And uh, there's also a lot more stuff on YouTube. A uh, 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 podcast on SoundCloud, it's just this podcast. It's same on iTunes. But on YouTube, we there's a lot more content, including the Rogue One review coming Friday. So keep your eyes open for that. Thanks for watching. And until next time, never stop watching trailers. Well, you can. Bye. Peace. Glad to see you here on YouTube. Now you wonder what should I do? Staring at my face is a memory nation. No one to find a place that's for conversation. Where do they discuss all the latest movies? Or when something big happens in the news? See, that's us. What are we talking about?